one to walk with all by myself. No one to talk with, but I'm happy on the shelf. Ain't misbehaving, saving all my love for you. I know for certain the one I love. I'm through with flirting. It's you that I'm thinking of. Ain't misbehaving, saving all my love for you. Napkin. She likes a clean napkin. She likes to clean everything. I'll say this much for our marriage, it's been very hygienic. I think we invented safe sex. There was so little contact, it was like sending it by post. Second class. Other people had foreplay. We had security drill. What was that? An announcement. What announcement? No more breakfast in bed. Oh, that's it. Be quick before I see your breast. Oh, poor in suburb. Husband sees breast. Clive! Where are we, Melissa? Why don't we go on holiday or something? I can't go on holiday. I have my yoga lessons and the psychiatrist. But I want to go somewhere different. Like maybe this side of the bed. Clive! If you're looking for a brain, I don't think it's there. I think I've got conjunctivitis. You've got too many late nights. Have we got any eye ointment? For eyes like that, you need screen clean. I could be going blind and nobody would care. Ye gods, talk about somewhere over the rainbow. What do you think it is? I think it's you being away from home for two weeks. I think it's booze or sunrise. That's what it is. Oh. I am not here for your convenience between other engagements. We used to be good in bed. I still am. Good morning, Clive. How's Melissa? Well covered. Well recovered. <clears throat> Has she been poorly? Just a cold. I thought she did yoga. They still get colds. Oh. I thought they didn't. They get headaches. That's what they get. Lots of headaches. I think I'm pregnant. Was it worth it? No. Have you told anybody? 
trust my best friend in absolute confidence. Then it'll be all over town. Now tell your mother before she hears it from someone she can't abide. Shall I still have a job? So long as it's not contagious. You're a good stylist. Pity you're not as nimble with your feet as you are with your fingers. personal question. I'd rather it wasn't too personal. I'd really prefer a life of unblemished superficiality. <laughs> I'm not really comfortable plumbing the depths. That's a pity. I truly believe you'd have most interesting depths. I'm a deeply shallow person, Mrs. Wales. What was the question? Have you been getting any funny phone calls? In what way funny? Like Perhaps threatening. Why would I be getting threatening phone calls? I'm afraid one possibility might be my husband. He's very jealous. Of me? Of anybody. Oh, well then. Especially you. Why me? Because I told him how I feel about you. Mrs. Wales. Call me Ramona. No, no, I won't call you Ramona. Seems I'm in enough trouble with Mrs. Wales. can age you visibly in the time he takes to get the curlers in. There are some days, Vera, when you just have to have a fag. You don't smoke. I know. Meal's been stopped. Smoking? And well, that's about it now. He's stopped everything. He still drinks, though, doesn't he? Oh, aye, he still drinks. But when you think of all the interest you have when you're first married... I know. I think he finds me unsightly because he can see it marks where my girdle's been. Nobody tells you these things at school. I've taken to wearing it outside of my vest, but it makes no difference. Look on the bright side. Sometimes there's only one thing worse than not being made love to by your husband, and that's being made love to by your husband. That's true. I used to think of Cary Grant. Oh, Vera. That's what's in store for us, isn't it? Hollywood or bust. It's been a great boon, I always think, to tired marriages. I used to wonder if... Kind, thoughtful husbands existed. And of course they do, when they're out with their girlfriends. Right. I'd better go and see what I can do about Mrs. Pendlebury. I think I've got a challenge. What about poor old Mr. Pendlebury? just his nature. He's always been jealous. I blame his high-protein diet. He goes mad if anybody looks at me. I haven't been looking at you. Well, well, I look at you, but I don't, you know, look at you. I know. What makes him think I do look at you? What have you told him? Just that you're a thoughtful employer. Well, there's no harm in that. And you're very good looking. Why did you tell him I'm very good looking? I'm not good looking. Oh, but you are. Well, that's a lie. How jealous does he get? You're quite jealous. How big is he? He's considerably older than you. Or me too, for that matter. Never mind how old he is. How big is he? About as tall as you. I knew it. I don't know why you women have this prejudice against marrying small people. What condition is he in? Oh, he's quite fit for his age. He teaches survival at one of those outdoor schools in his spare time. I sometimes think he'd rather climb a mountain than take me shopping. <laughs> What's his name? Lester. But he likes to be called Rocky.
see ya, baby. No one gets past Chuck Purvis, private eye. Ten, twenty-seven hours. Old bat enters house. I'm on the trail, Sonia, baby. Your money's well spent. Your Auntie Mavis has got to go in on Wednesday. She's having everything removed. MC office supplies. Hello. Who is this? Your wife's mother's wife. Oh. How uh, have you been? Listen, Clive, I want you to meet me. I'm round the corner in Crescent Road. What, you mean now? Yes, now. And don't look guilty. Just remember, Spider Woman's watching you. Whitley feels these fingers round his throat. He's steel fingers round his throat. That's the trouble when they're childless. I've told her, time and time again, having the cleanest three-piece suite in the area is no substitute for your natural functions. Not everybody wants children. You see them screaming in supermarkets, it makes you glad you've got less bulk in your trolley. Clive would like children. I've heard him say so. He'd be a good father, your Clive. When they're born, anyway. I don't know what he's like in the beginning. Mother! Well, something's not working with you two. And everybody blames that these days. It's supposed to be a crime not to be emotionally fulfilled. It's got so you don't be seen out not wearing a smile. I'm not going to be sick. Please, don't let me be sick. Wouldn't say avoiding. I left messages. Has Spider Woman not been passing on my messages? I've not been avoiding you. As a matter of fact, I called at your place this morning. When? You're just arriving for work. I saw you. So how come I didn't see you? Something came up. What? Your skirt. That's what came up. I was on my way to see you, and I don't know. I just turned and went away. Because my skirt came up. You're the most female female I've ever met. It takes a bit of getting used to. Listen, Quigley. If you're saying I am some kind of tramp... No! I am here to tell you there is no necessary connection between the length of your skirt and the size of your morals. Your wife wears them down to the ankles. Doesn't stop her bouncing about on my husband. Will you keep your voice down? I didn't mean to suggest there's anything wrong with your morals. Oh. Something wrong with my legs? No! As a matter of fact, you've got very good legs. So, there is life after business hours. Why have you been avoiding me? Well, there's been no real need for us to get in contact. I think it must be all over between your husband and my wife. Melissa hasn't been out of the house for a couple of weeks. Oh, well, I'll tell you why she hasn't been out of the house for a couple of weeks. My husband's been away on a course. Have a bun. No, thank you. Have a bun. You're going to need it. Because he's back. He's had nothing for two weeks but lectures on pension funds and investments. So what do you think he's going to be looking for? Have two buns. <laughs> to be sick.
seven. Suspect enters love nest. So, we've got a deal, right? Whenever we can, we are going to make their love life as difficult as possible for my husband and your wife. Don't worry, Klein. Right. Could you say that with a bit more adrenaline? Right. What are you grinning at? I'd almost forgotten what a determined lady you are. Almost forgotten me? Oh, I must have made an impression on you. You did, actually. So, shake on it. I'm going back to work, Clive. You weren't sick. I'll never be sick again. What happened? What happened was not having you here. All that time you've been away seemed endless. But now we're together again. Truly together now. At last. For me, this will always be a special day. Your birthday? I didn't know it was your birthday. Not my birthday. Us. The first time we were truly one. Oh, yeah. David, did it move for you? What? Did what move? Was the earth? Sometimes when two people come together at the peak of love and mutual desire, sometimes the earth moves. Did it, David? Did it move? Yeah, well, it did a bit. A bit? Yeah, well, quite a bit, really. Sort of a, a jerk. A throb? Yeah, that's it. A throb. Oh, David. Now we shall always be one. Forever. Oh. Everything all right? June's had to go home with a headache. Well, she's got the space for it. And there's a Mr. Purvis been calling you. Right. <laughs> Chuck Purvis, private eye. Did I wake you, Mr. Purvis? No way. Well, what was it, Mr. Purvis? Call me Chuck. You've been trying to get me. What was it? I was reporting in, wasn't I? I'm on the ball here. You were right. They didn't waste any time. They're here now. Yes. What? Where is here, Mr. Purvis? The hotel. Yes. Yes. Which hotel? Right. Good thinking. Uh, I was just going to take a look uh, at the name. Uh, it's kind of discreet here. Uh, I'll call you back. My husband Lester thinks we're going for a fortnight to Corfu. Self catering. I'm very glad for you both. Sounds nice. I like the idea of your husband in Corfu. My husband Lester thinks you and I are going for a fortnight to Corfu. Self-catering. Where the hell would he get an idea like that? I think he must have misunderstood something I said. Well, that's some misunderstanding. What did you say? Well, it may have been just something like, uh, I'd love to go for a fortnight with you to Corfu. Self-catering. Quickly, action stations. 
Get your butting gear, Quigley. Come on. Now, right now. On the double. Mr. Quigley, don't forget your coat. I wouldn't like you to catch a chill. I uh, won't keep me a moment, Mrs. Drysdale. Of course, MC Office Supplies offers a complete after-sales service. You can let go of him now. Otherwise, he's going to find it difficult to get to the door. Psst. Beware of a stranger in a dark Land Rover. with Lester Wills, the exterminator. You can understand why I have the feeling my life isn't my own these days. I, I, get, I get pulled and pushed in other people's directions. How's your mother? Gone. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Gone to Australia. Australia? I thought she was dying. She got fed up with dying and went to Australia. He's got a sister out there. They're both widows. Where are we going? To a hotel. Why are you taking me to a hotel? Oh, relax, Clive. We're not going in the hotel. We're just going to the car park. Why? You're going to steal my husband's car. Wrapped under the seat. I'm sorry. I thought they were all gone. Okay. All over. Don't lie to me, Lester. I promise you, Ramona, this is a rodent free vehicle. What have you done with it? You won't see it again. Put it in the bin, Lester. What about the tail? You know I collect tails. The bin, Lester. Crying for. I, I just feel uh, unaccountably sad. Here, dry your eyes. <laughs> oh, you won't actually be stealing it. I've got his spare keys. Just get in the jack and drive it away. After a few miles, dump it just for sheer inconvenience. Will you keep your eyes on the road? You drive too fast. I don't like driving fast. I like staying alive. Oh, you don't like my driving. You don't like my legs. I never said I didn't like your legs. Just they seem to come all at once. the old gumshoe legs a while. Oh, oh that's cute. Ugh. I've been sitting on a chocolate. Why don't we have something sent up? Like a crutch. Heaven. I'm in heaven. Oh. I'm like a doggy to death. Oh, David. Oh, Melissa. It will be like this, won't it? Always. Always? Oh, yes. Promise me. It's never been like this. Not for me. 
I can see now I've existed in a kind of bloodless calm. Oh, David, you brought me to life. You can say that again. Just open the door, get in and drive it away. Where to? Turn right out of the drive and I'll follow you. Now, when we get somewhere suitable, we'll dump it and then I'll drive you back. I don't like it. You've got the keys. How tricky can it be? I'll say this for you. Since I met you, my life does contain elements of excitement. Not to mention insanity. Go get them, Clive. Chuck. I thought I heard my car alarm. Don't be long. I never thought I'd be glad to hear my car alarm. <laughs> <laughs> was that your naked detective? Half naked. What was he doing, do you think? I think I'd rather not think. It's a good job he's not in America. I could see absolutely no place for a concealed weapon. <laughs> Back to an empty house. Me neither. Do you want to go for a drink? Do you think we should? No. No, me neither. Why, Why do we, we go, go for, for a drink? drink? <laughs> no one to walk with all by myself. No one to talk with. Ain't misbehaving. We'll be back next Tuesday at the same time. And there's more comedy on BBC Two shortly in Joking Apart. Like Jack Horner in the corner, don't go nowhere. What do I care? Your kisses are worth waiting for. Believe me, I don't stay out late, don't care to go. I'm home about eight, just me and my radio. Ain't misbehaving, saving all.